It is Tuesday, April 9th. We are one day closer for the Army having a fucking blast. If you are going to be in Columbus, I'm going to say it at the beginning, say it at the end of the show, I might say it 50 times because I want to hang out with you guys. Yogi's on Hard Road Friday, this Friday. Doors open at 11, live shows at 12. It's the spring kickoff, the spring game preview show. We had to do it with a live event. Come hang out with Chris and I. Pat will be there, Justine Aisley, the whole crew. Is going to be there. Not only are we doing the live show at 12, which will be fun. We also are going to do a couple things different during the show, like we do at live shows. Andy Joe is going to be there working the crowd. And then after the show, we're going to hang out for a while. Have ourselves a nice afternoon. And if you want to hang out with the Army before the spring game, come kick it with us. So that's my uh, that's my shameless plug to start the show. But, Chris, how's your week going? Wait, it's Tuesday, Tuesday. Tuesday. It's Titty Tuesday. Yeah. Whip them out if you got them, men included. Let's see those areolas. No, it's Tuesday, Tuesday. You're, you're not a sketch guy. Oh, man. What the fuck are you talking about? Oh, my gosh. He's not hip. I'm not hip at all. What's up, brother? You guys are fucking weirdos. Tuesday, Tuesday. I do have to tell you that Eclipse was cool as shit. Bro, it was fucking cool. I was downplaying it, and when that sky went dark and you could just see the ring, it was like, wow. Like, think about all the things that have to align to make that happen. From no clouds, right? Sunny day. And then just the perfect interception point mm -hmm. and the perfect moon size. It was just, like, so crazy to think on a deep level. It was really, really cool. My, my kids came down here to Bridge Park. Well, my younger two, Luke and Lily did. Justine and I went out, hung out with her parents, and, 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 and watched it happen. And it was really fun. Really cool. Really cool experience. My son kept yelling at the at the moon. Hey, get out of the way! It's cold. <laughs> he kept yelling at the moon, bro. the The moment before it went blackout was the freakiest yeah, dog. Yeah. Like, like it was like a weird glow. Yeah. It looked like somebody was just like shining a light on things instead of like the actual sunlight. It was really freaky and crazy. If you had those glasses, like, and and then when it actually eclipsed, when it was a full eclipse, mm -hmm. it was perfectly centered on the sun. And you took the glasses off and looked at it. it bro, was, you're not supposed to take the glasses off. Why? Bro, they you couldn't it. see it in the glasses. Yeah, but it's like too much of the uh, the UV light. So it's like you're staring at the actual sun. Your I can eyes see feel just good. fine. My eyes feel great. But my left eye feels a little funny. Can't even lie. <laughs> you would. I texted you yesterday. I texted you yesterday. My eyes do feel funny. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope you all enjoyed it. Really cool. Really cool to see, at least if you were working or, or whatever. If you got to just step outside to check it out. That was, that was cool. I mean, they said the next one here will be in 2099. And I ain't going to be here in 2099. Bro, I told you. I'm taking 2044, 2045 off. Whatever fucking day that is. I'm going to be in Spain for that bitch. Hey, it was cool. I got a couple years. Bro, I didn't really get the hype before. I'm all for the hype now. Yeah, it was that sweet. Shit was, that shit was nuts. It was really sweet. And it's an excuse nuts. to go to Spain. I'm in. Right. Well, I, yeah, we could all slide. I mean, by then, I mean, hopefully I'm be we'll, 60. Be, we'll be retired. Hopefully. Um, bro, did you see the, the obviously the the balls over the flashlight videos? Yes, of course I did. I, <laughs> I saw it got put on a, bro, on a Mexican, Mexican news. <laughs> uh, we were going to play the video, and it was blurred out. But if you haven't seen it, there's a viral video, and it happens all the time. I mean, every time there's any talk about an eclipse, I get it gets sent to me by one of my fucking degenerate friends. Mm -hmm. But it's a picture of what looks kind of like a sun, but it's probably a flashlight, and all of a sudden, the nutsack just goes right over top of it like an eclipse. <laughs> and uh, I sent it to the Menace Generals if you uh, if you didn't see it. Um, it's in there, but, uh, yeah, wild. And then a Mexican news station put it on as <laughs> two females and a male Bro, host. They were, and disgusting. they were like, their faces were, oh my God, I was dying. Somebody got fired. But you had a good day yesterday. Yeah, it was a great day. Good oh, morning day. so far. Good, great morning. Got a good leg, leg workout in today with mama and Ainsley. Ainsley actually got put, uh, went through the leg workout too. I got a busy day. A lot of shit going on today. Bro, but, I, had, I had a pull day today, bro. I was doing so good, and then someone came in there smelling like fish fish paste, and I just couldn't couldn't almost almost throw up in the back of the gym, dog. It was a bad deal. So I had to just I had to skedaddle. You need, to, you need to find a better gym. Yeah, bro. That, and, like, I got there. Like, half the lights were off. It's a dope gym, but the, the main guy that goes early wasn't there. So it was just like it was an eclipse workout. We just, <laughs> we just worked out in the dark. What the hell? What is going on? Shout out Akron. Shout out Akron. We got a lot to discuss. Mm -hmm. Quarterback position is, oh, Julian saying lost his stripe, his yep. black stripe. And so here's the question that I have for the chat, because we're going to dive into this, you know, like we do it after the hour mark. Julian saying got a stripe off, like, and I'm starting to see all these people get their stripes off, and I'm like, damn. Like, I get it early enrollee numbers are up. I get it 
this is the, the era of the transfer portal. And so Ryan Day might be using the black stripe as motivation a little differently, which that's all it is. The black stripe is just a motivation tactic. He's obviously using it a little differently, but I don't ever remember an early enrollee being eligible to get their black stripe off in the spring. Unless it was just like, wow. And Julian Sane got it off. Will Howard got it off. Jay or Jeremiah Smith got it off. With, I'll give him a pass for that. Mm -hmm. So many people get their stripes off, and I want to know. Has the program gone soft? Has the criteria changed for getting your black stripe off and becoming a Buckeye? And it, I'm not saying that's a bad thing because it could just be a tool in Ryan Day's toolbox to keep kids happy and keep them out of the portal. And if so, I'm all for it. But have we gone soft on these incomer, incomers mm -hmm. and their black stripe removal criteria? That's what I want to know. Yes or no in the chat. What do you think? Need, need your answer. Um... I, I think it's a lot easier to get your black stripe off now. So, yes, we've gone soft. You just didn't yeah. want to say it that way. Right. So Sounds but, good. But Julian's saying maybe the chosen one, and that's what we're going to debate. Well, later. that's the other side right. of it, right? Julian's saying could just be fucking that good. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But I, I find it hard to believe both him and Will Howard are that good. Phil, he already chiming in. It's not his thing, so, of course, he's getting soft on it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and like I said, I have no problem with it if it's for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. But we got that and a bunch more to talk about. Let's get it going. Lugie. Let them know what time it is, Bubba. Let's get to the show. Let's get to the show. Um, for starters, two-year anniversary mm. of Dwayne Haskins Jr. Uh, passing away. Obviously gone too soon. All indications, great young man. Obviously, you know him. Yeah, uh, fuck the best. can't believe it's been two years. I can't either, man. It's just when, when Chris hit me, of course, he put his picture in the show notes, and I'm like, fuck. It's so hard to look at that kid and just know he's gone. It really is. In two years, it feels like forever. I feel like that happened decades ago. But I also feel like it happened yesterday. It's a weird feeling. But, yeah, just always want to remember and bring up Dwayne because obviously fantastic football player. But I guess I can give you the insight. Just a fantastic kid. Mm -hmm. And I know people – here's my one of my biggest pet peeves is everybody that dies was fantastic. I fucking hate that. It's like, no, nah, he was an asshole. I'm telling you genuinely. I would I would not say he was a fantastic kid if he wasn't. He really, really was. Just big heart, big smile, great kid, the best of the best. And so just rest in peace, Dwayne. In the chat, let us let me know your favorite uh, Dwayne Haskins play, yeah. whether it was the run against Michigan, the throw to Austin Mack that kind of was the the start of 7-11. Whatever it is, just just let me know. I'm I'm all I'm all here for it. Um, I do want to check in on Miami. I got a video queued up from from the from the good old. We have GMO. to do this every now and then because yeah, we do. Miami fans are a lot like Cleveland fans. It's they're down bad pretty much every year. Then you get a guy like Deshaun Watson, and you're like, oh. We're back. And then he doesn't play, and you're not back. And Miami fans, every year, go through the same shit. And this was an excerpt from a Miami space. If you haven't been, boy, are they entertaining. Let's just check in with Miami fans. Dumbass shit, man. Mario elevates the fucking room. Y'all was crying all summer. Y'all was crying all through the fall. That Mario this, Mario that. Mario can't land a quarterback. We ain't putting shit out there on the field. He gets you fucking Cam Ward. And we crying about a fucking backup quarterback that might not ever see the field again. Fuck wrong well with y'all, man. What the fuck do you want from Mario? Oh, you God, I love Hurricane <laughs> fans. Oh was, my goodness, bro. Miami spaces are so funny. Real life comedy hour, dog. I mean, it's just <laughs> hilarious hearing these fans go after each other. It mm -hmm. is so funny. And Chris, Chris used to be deep in the trenches and spaces. It's like crack, dog. And I, he got me in there a couple times defending my honor against Miami fans. Mm -hmm. A bunch of fucking, a bunch of random no name people telling me I don't know shit. It was fucking hilarious. <laughs> then they came back and asked if you coach receivers. Right. Dennis was bad. And after, after, I was right, and Gaddis was hot ass. Mm -hmm. They were all in my DMs like, yo, coach, which, what do we need to do? Like, we'll all – we'll fundraise. We'll send letters to Mario. We want you down here. I'm yeah. like, wait a minute. Y'all said I ain't no shit, though. Bro, someone said that Josh Gaddis was a good play caller but not a good wide receiver coach. So they wanted you to come in and coach receivers and let him continue to call plays, and it was going to be the perfect marriage. That's how dumb yeah. some people are. Bro, I mean, Miami honestly. spaces are crazy, dog. So crazy. Just checking in on Miami. It Always sounds... got to check in on them, though, because mm -hmm. they're entertaining. And, you know, it's just like it's like your one friend who's a little fucked up. You're like, I got to check on him, make sure everything. Man, I know he's fucked up, but let me make sure he's like everything's still okay. It's like every now and again, like turning on the crazy reality television. Yeah. It's like, you know, every now and again, I, I, I you know, I wonder how, you know, Ray J's doing. I'm loving hip hop. So let me, let me turn it on. See right. what's going on. It's, I go in spaces just to kind of give me a nice perspective on how well things are going for me. Yeah. 
So uh, shout out to um, shout out to whatever they got going on over there. It's, 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 it's <laughs> whatever it's, that is. It's some some real cool shit. Um, the NCAA video game comes out in July on July nineteenth. Zach, question for you and for the chat: What three classic teams do you want to see in the game? I want to see Joe Burrow's LSU. Nineteen LSU. Yeah. I want to see. Hmm. I want to play with Georgia, 2021 Georgia. Okay. I want to play with that defense really bad. And then one more. I I need a throwback to well, let's see. When did it go away? 12? Uh well, it went away like so like you got you got the 13 teams, not the 14 teams. So okay. So There's I need no I, playoffs. It went away right before the playoffs. Yeah, so I need the Ohio State Natty team. Right. We gotta have them. I need to play with Zeke. Those are the those are the three I'm thinking. Um I debated that 2020 Alabama team. Yeah, that's a little a, bit I was going to say that one. And I feel like it's some maybe one of the Clemson teams, but if you're picking three teams, I think you need you need an Ohio State team, you yeah. need that LSU team, and then it's like, well, do you take the best Georgia team or do you take the best Clemson or Bama team? Yeah. 2015 Bama though was crazy. Crazy. So it was 17. Yeah, there was a, there was a lot of fucking crazy, but people are going way back. They said the 07 Gators yeah, I'm with you. you. Like those are some great yeah. classic teams, but like I want a team, a classic team that we didn't get to play with. Yeah, I want a team that was never in the game. Those teams were in the games. I mean, eventually they'll bring the, they'll you know feature those teams. I'm sure, but yeah, the o, o, o 08 Gators, mm -hmm. o one Miami, absolutely. Yeah, with the, with the modern mechanics, though, I don't, I'm not sure I'd ever want to play with fucking Tebow. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, I would literally with with precision passing being a thing and the way I throw interceptions and in Madden, there's no way I can afford a ball to be behind anybody. <laughs> so we're not going for it. I'll never play with that team unless I can run the triple option with them. Yeah, I mean, you just got to do what we did. Yeah, run the quarterback. Run the quarterback. Um, I, I felt, felt like this was newsworthy, and I wanted to ask you about the brand stuff. So after 18 years with Under Armour, Auburn will. Be switching over to a Nike school. Did you ever coach for a non-Nike school? Yeah, Temple was an Under Armour oh, school. Okay, what's the? Is there any major difference you <laughs> yeah. notice? Okay. There's well, a big difference. Okay, I mean, when it comes to like, like when I was at Temple, this was on the front end, like the very beginning of Under Armour putting out cleats. Because prior to that, you were allowed to wear Nike cleats. You just had to have your Under Armour apparel, right? Because mm -hmm. Nike just had Under Armour didn't have cleats. Yeah, and so it was actually the year before I got to Temple was the first year that they had Under Armour cleats, and Under Armour made it where if you were in Under Armour school, you had to wear Under Armour cleats. And they had field turf. Well, the cleats had these little hooks in them to, like, help with traction, and they kept grabbing the turf and tearing ACLs like fucking crazy. Yeah. And it was they, they lost, like, four or five ACLs in the first couple of practices, and they called Under Armour, like, what the fuck? And they're like, uh, Band-Aid, you can use Nike shoes. <laughs> so they had to go, like, Dick's Sporting Goods, and, like, they had to try to buy a bunch of Nike shoes. It was crazy. But um, that would have been a great marketing tactic if Nike got a hold of that. They oh could yeah, have, they could bury it under armor for quick. sure. But I mean, it, it matters, you know. Like I, kids, it, it, kids aren't going to pick a school because they're jump jump man or Nike. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, you want to wear the best shit. I I was subscribed to the conspiracy theory that only teams um, that were Nike schools could win titles. And I think since the playoffs, I can't remember any non-Nike school winning a title. No. Oh. Just for the record. And I mean, Auburn with Cam Newton before the playoffs. Yeah, right before the playoffs. Um, and also, that birthed one of the more iconic quarterback sneakers. Obviously, like, everybody remembers that the Cam Newton, like, high ankle laced yeah. uh, Under Armour shoes. But, like, the first playoff was all four Nike schools. Remember, Nike did a full press run. Oh, yeah. On, uh, <laughs> on it, you know, one not done was one of their things. I don't know. They, they killed it on that front. So, yeah. go be a Nike school if you want to win a title. Hey, I guess so. Auburn's trying. Yeah. Oh, I got a baseball video for you, bro. Just I thought this was hilarious. Uh, Juan Soto in the middle of an at-bat, bro, goes over to – this is in the middle of an at-bat, not between <laughs> innings. Like, they're playing baseball They right are now. playing baseball. <laughs> the pitcher is getting ready to pitch. He's over there signing baseballs. Like, what are we doing? Is, is, it's a regular season now, right? Yes, it's, it's spring regular training's season. over. This is not spring training. This is, this is how baseball loses people. Mm -hmm. They're like – what, this is not a real competition. This dude's signing autographs, and they're playing. Yeah, even he thinks it's boring. Yeah, <laughs> so like he's bored in the in the outfield. Or it's like the ultimate disrespect to that hitter. Like, yeah. You're not hitting shit out here. Like, you ain't going to hit it out here. You're not touching the pitch, so why am I going to focus on you? Well, I could go down that path. Make it a flex, then. Yeah, that is a flex. Yeah. It's like a, it's like the Steph Curry no-look three. Right. You know, the, just nothing to do with you, though. Nothing. You know, you're you're off, off to the side. Um, the Eclipse yesterday, bro, you know. Fun stuff. So I had a, I got this Odo Beckham Jr. video for you. This is him looking at the eclipse in 2017 directly at it. Um, <laughs> since then, averaging 600, 635 yards, 
four touchdowns and no Pro Bowls per season before that eclipse stare, 1,300 yards, 12 touchdowns, and three Pro Bowls. Per season on average. Yeah, so per season on average. I'm fucked then because <laughs> I looked right at that pitch. So Odell was averaging almost 1,400 yards a season and 12 touchdowns with three Pro Bowls. Then he looked at the eclipse, yep. and his production got cut more than in half. Yeah. Don't look at eclipses. He's, they, they tell you all the time. But but I, I don't know, bro. I looked at the eclipse, and I feel like I have a third eye now. I feel like I'm seeing everything so much more clearly. I feel like uh, my neuro pathways are connected. Um, and maybe he, he, he needed to look at that eclipse because what came afterwards? He sacrificed his limbs to go in a Super Bowl. That's true. Post-Super Bowl. Just saying. Shout out to shout out to Odell. Um, all right, UConn and Dan Hurley, bro, they got it done. Dominating fashion. You don't have to worry about Zach Eady and, and winning a title. Uh, I try to tell you. Yeah. Zach Eady is a bad athlete that happens to be 7'4. I hope you took my advice and took the UConn money line. I'm sure it didn't pay out well, but it paid out. Bro, he's gonna be a I mean, Zach's gonna be an NBA draft pick. I don't know where, but he's he's definitely gonna be a, a first rounder, I think. Um, but dog, Dan Hurley. Might be one of the coldest coaches out there. Oh, dog. yeah. Like, cold as shit. In 2020, He's people better get us now because it's coming. Like He called a shot in 2020 in a press conference. He came out and said, hey, you better get us now because we're coming. It's going to take a minute, but we're coming. Since he said that, his record is 105-29, and 29, four NBA draft picks. His pay doubled. He got a, a, a raise, a massive raise. Uh, back-to-back national championships, best point differential in tournament history. Did you pay attention and listen in 2020? Because he was there was no cap, not no bullshit there. I think he set the record twice because I think their last year's team had the best point differential in tournament history, and then they just beat that record. It's like we're talking about an unreal run, and we've talked about it before. <laughs> March Madness is the hardest tournament to win because there are so many variables in it, and it's it's such a large tournament, and it's one and you're out. So one bad game and it's over. Yeah. They ran shit, dog. He's so fucking cold, bro. And it's funny because Prime said the same thing this last year. Like, you know, like, get us now because it's coming. <laughs> I don't think it's coming like it's coming there. Like, bro came twice, no diddy. Like, <laughs> like really got this bitch going, bro. He he's, really did. He's got a fan in me, man. Um, he got asked right after the game about potentially leaving UConn and going to Kentucky. He said, I don't think that's a concern. My wife, <laughs> you should have her answer that. She'll answer that question better than I can. Shit. Should yeah. he go to Kentucky? The, the shit at the end was my favorite part. Yeah. He said, she'll answer that question better than I can. Shit. <laughs> like, well, sounds like the wife is making those kind of calls. It, will he stay or will he go? Should he stay or should he go? I wouldn't go to Kentucky. I would Why? Stay He's right. built a monster at UConn. And it's, they are humming and cooking. And Kentucky has so much political bullshit because it is such a blue blood. Why? UConn's a, be- a better job than Kentucky right now. UConn is the blue blood right now. Like, I'm staying there. They're going to have a ridiculous NIL budget. They're going to have such buy-in from everybody. I mean, they're just such a well-oiled fucking machine. He's he's going to become Greg Popovich of college basketball if he stays at UConn. I mean, if he keeps it going, there's no doubt. Um, and I it, mean, going back-to-back is so fucking crazy. Oh, so crazy. I mean, Florida did it when I was there. 06, mm-hmm. 06, I think it was 06, 07. Yeah, Billy. Well, let's see. It would have been. Yeah, yeah, the 07, 07. 08, like winter, March of 07, I think was the first one because we beat Ohio, we beat Ohio State, State in the, on the football field and then yeah. they beat them in the national championship on the on the basketball court. Man, I was, in, I was in fourth grade going through it. It was wild. I was going through it, bro. Joakim Noah, Al Horford. I fucking hate Joakim Noah. Al Horford's a hooper, though. I really got that shit to him. Fuck you, King. <laughs> Forever. 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 But this, this Kentucky job is interesting, man. It's mm-hmm. It's – Kind of feeling Alabama-ish when Dan Lanning said no. You know, the first couple of because you had Alabama's coach, Nate Oates, shut down the rumors, said he's he's not going to Bama. They, Jay Wright was asked on TV, and he said, no, I'm definitely not. I definitely have no interest. I'm really happy doing this TV stuff. And now now UConn, I mean. Probably, well, we, that's kind of like a non-answer from, from Hurley, right? I don't think that's no, a it concern. Is. I mean, it's it's a Brian Kelly answer, and yeah. what, a week later, he's at, he's at LSU. And they're going to reach out to your guy who we just talked about, Billy Donovan. Hey, that's the guy. That's but, the fucking guy. But do you leave the NBA for it? Uh, if you want to get back into college, I don't know. Yeah, I guess so. Just, 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 just something. I'd leave the NBA for a high school job. Fuck that league. I would not leave. I mean, he's he's coaching the Bulls right now. Yeah, sounds cool. <laughs> Jordan's not walking through those doors, big man. Right. <laughs> Let's get a quick word from our partner, Zach. All right, we'll be right back after this. Top of the morning to you, menace army. It's that time of year. Everybody's a little Irish, and if you are Irish, you could. 
maybe put a little Irish in somebody else this St. Patrick's Day. Menace Army, I got something for you. Manscaped, our partner, has just dropped a new lawnmower, and it is badass. The Lawnmower 5.0, it has two blades. So you have one, they're normal manscaper. It's like a trimmer for body hair and your manly parts. And then they have a second blade, a foil blade, to go smoother wherever your heart may desire. Let's get that smooth slip and slide ride for St. Patty's Day. What do you say? The good news is for Menace Army, you get 20% off of free shipping. So get 20% off free shipping using promo code MENACE at manscaped.com. That's 20% off of free shipping with code MENACE at manscaped.com. This St. Patrick's Day, make sure your little hairy leprechaun is a luckier than ever manscaped leprechaun. Back to the show. I'm keeping it on all week. What a great ad read. Just keep it on all year. Hey, you, you, don't, you don't want to have a hairy leprechaun even in April. Right. You know, they say April showers bring May flowers. Like, don't leprechauns live year round? I don't know. I, I don't mean, think I, they're real, Chris. I'm just saying, like, like you're right. Um, Zach <laughs> Eady, your boy, 37 points, 10 rebounds, 2 blocks. How dominant. I mean, he's like literally Asian Shaq, bro. Nothing he can't do. I mean, listen, he's, he's effective. Just, I'll give him that. He's effective. But I can't get over it. I can't get over how bad of an athlete he is. He and, and you know, you could come back at me and say, "Oh, but but for seven four, he's a really he's a decent athlete." Yeah, I don't care. He's gonna get absolutely demolished in the NBA. I wouldn't draft him. He's gonna be a really confusing. He's he's a really confusing NBA prospect for me. I'll root for him, but I think he was probably born fifteen years too late. Unless he, he I mean. Off the bench, though, against twos, he could dominate some number two centers in the league for a little bit. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, I also watched Clint Capella carve out a career, and I think Clint Capella fucking sucks. <laughs> I don't know who that is. He's, bro, well, he was almost a, he was a fucking all-star back in the day, dog. Literally just because he played with, like, Chris Paul and James Harden. Yeah. Just like the lot guy, like a rim runner. Yeah. Um. So if he can, you know, if he could defend a little bit and be a rim runner, there you go. Um. K Caitlin Clark, real quick, the numbers on this, what? national women's national t national title ridiculous 9.9 .9 million for the 2023 national championship 18.7 <clears throat> bro for this year no matter how you feel about caitlin clark she has uplifted the sport more than anybody in the history of it dog maybe that's that, outrageous maybe in the history of any sport yeah like I mean, they one doubled, single person they doubled their viewership almost they for did. the national championship game in a year that's crazy that, but I'm, I'm not, I'm hopefully this, this sport continues to grow and, but I got to imagine they're going to have a nice back fall back to reality next year's national championship game. Yeah. I, I don't know if there is an, another, another cash cow. Um, I mean, maybe Paige. I mean, honestly, maybe Juju, if they can market her correctly, because she's going to be the one that breaks Caitlin Clark's record if it ever gets broken. Yeah. Um, here, we, I don't Do you have this in the show, Pat? This, this Caitlin Clark graphic, this is crazy dog. You look at Caitlin Clark's, effectiveness graphic the green plot is hers that's not only every women's college basketball player that's every men and women college basketball player oh damn she's up at the top right. yes the green her. all the way at the top right i was the like i'm just looking at a bunch of white things i don't no. know what you're talking about they had to inflate the scale of this graph to point out how great caitlin clark is like number total number of assists and points in a career dog white like that's in she's on the moon literally nuts and there's people on this planet that will try to tell us that she's not a great basketball player that's a that i've never i've never seen anything like that like that is unreal and then we uh, we dog we and we've got some beef diana tarasi said on the thing like reality's coming and already <laughs> already phoenix mercury uh put this on their social media <laughs> this moment has become a movement, whether you've been here for a decade or a day, your chance to witness greatness is here. They're already promoting GOAT versus the rookie, dog. But that, Caitlin Clark hasn't been drafted. I'm just saying, how do they know who she's going to play for? Is that the team That's, who has the number one pick? Yeah. So they're already promoting her, playing for a team she hasn't been drafted by yet. Correct. Correct. Number 22 on her back right Man, I don't know who this bitch is, but I hope Caitlin Clark takes her soul in that game. I'm watching. I'm tuning in. <laughs> Me too. Reality's coming. Yeah, there's a new there's new blood coming to the WNBA. I don't know if you saw that graph. What, what's her fucking name? Uh, uh, <laughs> Diana Taurasi. Diana Taurasi. <laughs> Never heard of you. No idea who the fuck you are. I'm sure you're really good at, at your little sport. Caitlin Clark's coming for blood. 
she is she is one of one of the all time great WNBA players. Um, I'd argue that. Don't that, care. She wasn't as good as Caitlin Clark. I never heard of her. Yeah, I'd argue that, that Moore is probably better in her run with Tracy McGrady. Yes, but whatever. Not not going to really go into WNBA politics. I just thought. I just think like like damn. In a moment <laughs> where the sport is going to be uplifted or has to be uplifted, you get on TV and you hate on the young cat. Right. Like. She's going to fucking save your – she's going to save the WNBA. You'll probably get a raise. Exactly, bro. Because she's going to help bring in revenue to the league. The Why are you hating? The salary cap will go up because of her. Hating ass woman right there. That's the problem with women a lot of times. They just can't they, – they, they get jealous or something. It's, it's, it's like, I'm sorry. You didn't score all those points and make all those passes in college. Why is that her fault? Well, it's like damn, like it's like like these are the people that like tell us that we need to support women's basketball so the, the women can get paid more. And it's like damn, you support it, Diana. Yeah, you don't even support it. You're you're hating on a girl that's still in college. I'm telling you, man. I hope she gives her fifty, bro. I yeah. hope she. I, I hope she gives bucket after bucket after bucket yeah. and doing this shit in her face, all that. I need a I need a fifty burger, extra cheese. Yes, to be honest. I need. I need, and then I need a real reality came. No Diddy. Actually, all Diddy. It's WNBA. <laughs> Reality came. All Diddy after the game from Caitlin Clark. That'll shut the whole internet down. Um, NFL draft silly season. We're approaching it. I do have this stat for you, Zach. Rookie passing leaders every single year in the NFL. Zach, does any quarterback in this current class have the tools to throw for 4,000 or more yards this upcoming year? Well, I mean, I think that Drake may probably is the greatest uh, hope at that, yeah. but it's going to come down to situationally what he has. I mean, if he does go to Washington, like some people are saying, then he might have the tools to do it, but you got to think about it. On that list, I mean, C.J. Stroud obviously has the second most in the last decade behind Justin Herbert, and C.J. Stroud didn't really have a weapon. Mm -hmm. Like, he was just matriculating yards with ball placement. Seeing this is kind of wild, like seeing this chart. Uh, I guess I didn't realize that Herbert had 4,300 yards. No, me either. The craziest thing on this, too, is the Browns had back-to-back -back passing leaders as rookie quarterbacks. Dog, that's actually dope as shit. Yeah, except they both <laughs> ended up sucking. Yeah, they. well, it's funny that one led the, led the league in, like, rookie passing yards. And, like, and then they was, drafted like, another one was, the next year. Yeah, it was unequivocally not the answer. Also, fucking 2021, bro, Mac Jones, 3,800 yards. Crazy. Well, it, it just goes to show you, that, right? Like, just because you're the rookie passing leader doesn't mean you're good. It might just mean your draft class sucked. And right. you just are starting because you're the only option at a place like Kenny Pickett in Pittsburgh or Mac Jones. Kenny Pickett's like, like a thousand yards lower than everybody else on this list. Everybody except else. For Deshaun Kaiser, who only started, I think, 13 games. Like, Kenny Pickett was the rookie leading passer. Mm -hmm. And almost a thousand yards behind anybody else that was a rookie passing leader. <laughs> yeah, didn't didn't and it was a 17 game season, dog. Didn't hit 3000 yards. Yeah. How well, fucking wild. How I fucking tried wild to tell you, that? Chris. I tried to tell you in draft silly season. Dog. I wasn't a I wasn't a Kenny Pickett's going to be a good NFL guy. I was a Kenny Pickett is going to be a fun NFL guy, and that was incorrect. It hasn't been fun. No, it hasn't. Because not only did the gunslinger get checked out, of, get get taken out of him, he also stopped running the football. Like I thought we were going to get like the Kenny Pickett experience. Okay, I'm going to throw this bitch up 40 yards downfield. We're going to see who comes down with it, and then with that, you'll get the interceptions. Instead, we got checked down Kenny and the interceptions, and I'm glad my Steelers moved on from him. They my did the Steelers. right thing. <laughs> Chris's Steelers. They, they did. They did the right thing. All right, rookie receiving leaders. For uh, on the receiver side, mm -hmm. really interesting list littered with first rounders, except for guys like Michael Thomas and Puka Nakua. Mm -hmm. What receiver do you think has a skill set in this draft? I do know that I'm gonna have to circle back and ask you this post so we can see who goes where. Yeah, I mean, a guy that they're, they're talking about is not gonna go in the first round is Keon Coleman. That I think I could he could have a he could be really good in the NFL. Yeah, um, he's probably number one on my list. Um, I don't know. It, my problem is I don't know where they're slated, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like Xavier Worthy, I like A.D. Mitchell, I like. Um, uh, Roma Dunze is going to definitely get drafted in the top fifteen. So I, I don't know. Uh, the kid from LSU, what Brian Thomas? I think yeah, he's got Brian a real, Thomas. real chance to be a good, really good pro. Dog, Brian Thomas and A.D. Mitchell have my those, attention absolutely. Yeah, peace. those are two. But I think if Keon Coleman falls into the second or third, I think he's probably my first pick. There has been a lot of steam lately, Zach, of, of Rome potentially being a wide receiver one. I guess a couple teams have him ahead, Marv and Malik Neighbors. Not sure if I buy it or not, but he is intriguing. And some, I guess, some people believe that he's got a Jamar Chase build and maybe some Jamar Chase upside.
And that's when you know you're a great, great receiver when you're going to get other receivers drafted based on them seeing a sprinkle of your traits. Yeah. Like that, that that's that's the effect you see. Like we like Pat Mahomes is so great that he's changing how people draft quarterbacks. Yeah. Jamar Chase and what he's been able to do, a lot of times, like his body type, some sometimes it scare teams away because he's not like the longest and, yes. and not like a long strider. Um, people thought that maybe he couldn't be a number one. Obviously, the right team took took him at number four. He's going to change how you draft receivers. He is. So. He is. And and it's it's interesting because you look at this list, and I mean, Puka Nakua. Let's not just speed by how crazy of a year he had. I mean, there's three receivers that went over 1,400 yards on this list, and they're two of them are regarded as probably the best two in the league. Justin Jefferson, 1,400. Jamar Chase, 1,455. Puka Nakua had more than both. Mm -hmm. 1486 that is a wild number for a for a rookie let alone a late draft pick rookie crazy nuts. crazy puka de went absolutely fucking nuts this year nuts. dog it's 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 wild to see also it's funny because the the two guys on this list that led their teams as rookies juju smith schuster and calvin ridley the only two under a thousand yards yeah what what a time when i ask you a little bit about value um the colts are looking to trade up to, to draft brock bowers is Brock Bowers worth trading up for? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, depending on what you have to get, give away. I think he's that good. I think he is going to be a Travis Kelsey, George Kittle type of player in the NFL. And what would you give for them? Mm -hmm. Like, what would you give right now to say, hey, you're going to you're gonna get Travis Kelsey as a, as a rookie. You're, you're going to go get him. What's that worth to you? Now, obviously, if you knew that, he'd be worth more. If you knew that's what he was going to become, I think he is. Like, when I watch his game, I think he is exceptional. I think he's going to be one of the top – five tight ends in the league as a rookie. And I think by year three, he, he's going to be in the conversation for best tight end in the NFL. I really do. My biggest fear is that a team drafts him and treats him like a regular tight end. Yeah, that'd be bad. <laughs> that That's my biggest fear because I think he is one of the least, it's not, there's no such thing as absolutely bust proof. No. But he's one of the least bust proof guys, but can appear as a bust if you do what the Broncos did with Noah Fant. So we want you to just be a standard tight end. Yeah, it's like no, you got to give me the ball in creative ways. You got you got to do the, the the Travis Kelsey stuff, the George Kittle stuff. You know the the sweeps into the short side when when we have numbers, like all that kind of thing, so I can reach my potential. My mm -hmm. biggest fear is they're like, oh, Brock Bowers is great. We don't have to be creative. Drop him off there. Yeah, and but I do think for a guy like Anthony Richardson, that's a great weapon to have. I do too. Fucking great security blanket. Yeah, I think I mean it's you look at Anthony Richardson is is a very athletic quarterback who's not the most accurate, right? Mm -hmm. Who's a guy that has done really well that fits that mold? Lamar Jackson. What has he had almost in his entire career? Mark Andrews. Mark Andrews. Yep. And Mark I think Brock Bowers is is it Mark Andrews on steroids. I mean not well, not Travis Kelsey, but George Kittle, every quarterback they've had over there, he's done a really good job with. Yeah. I mean shit, like Brock Purdy, like like I, Brock Purdy is a good player, but the fact of the matter is when you have a – so my, my rule is this with the receivers. You become a megastar receiver when, you're, when the, you're the security blanket that starts hitting home runs. Mm -hmm. Tight end-wise, you're a megastar if you're the security blanket that starts hitting doubles. Yeah. Travis Kelsey, security blanket for Pat Holmes, <laughs> but he hits doubles. Yeah, he does. Kelsey, I mean, Kittle and Kelsey, security blankets hit doubles. Those guys, I mean – Fucking Mark Andrews, the guy, hits doubles. Brock Bowers has a chance to hit a lot of doubles in this league. Minimally. As a security blanket. Minimally. And he's a guy that can maybe turn those into triples and a home run every now and again because yeah. he is that athletic. So yeah. we'll see. We will see. Uh, what is the earliest you would draft Xavier Worthy? He's meeting with the Bears who are trying to do everything they can to make sure that Caleb Williams has a better future than than uh than, like than already, Justin. Already already right. making sure that they set Caleb Williams up for a chance at success at the very mm -hmm. least. So shout out to the, the Bears, you fucking idiots. Um, I don't know, it just depends on team fit. If I'm the Bears, I don't know that I, I I'm putting that higher priority on Xavier Worthy. You might what do they they have a second pick in the in the first round or uh yeah, they have two first round picks, but they're both top five. So it's like Obviously, you're not going to waste the top five pick. No, no. I mean, I, I think he fits a void, right? He obviously has elite speed. He's electric with the ball. He, I don't. I wouldn't call him a complete receiver. I don't think he'll be a wide receiver one. But if you have a wide receiver one, that's a great option, right? If you're a team that has a really big, like a, a, a solidified wide receiver one, I think Xavier Worthy in, a, in the first round makes a ton of sense. But if you don't, I don't know if I'm wasting my first round pick on him. If you're the Bears, my opinion is that you should explore Brock Bowers with that 
other first round pick. Mm -hmm. You can maybe trade down to eight or nine, draft Brock Bowers there. And then in that second round, either take Keon Coleman or A.D. Mitchell, whoever's available. And then you pair Cole Komet up with a superstar potential tight end mm -hmm. and Caleb Williams. That's now two security blankets. Yeah. He already has DJ Moore, DeAndre Swift, Keenan Allen, and then you add A.D. Mitchell. I, I think that's the quickest <laughs> route to success. Um, and I'll send my resume over to, to polls if he needs it. <laughs> New GM, Chris Drew. I think that's what you do. You get a more complete receiver. I mean, and this is a very deep receiver class. Yeah. So I think you, you go with a more complete receiver. Like I said, unless you – just think he fits a void that you need in your offense. Maybe DJ Moore's impressed. You know, you, you feel you feel good about your receiver crew and you need that that electricity to come in the building. Then I could see it. It's one and nine. So you don't have to trade down or anything. So you take you take Bowers and then even if you went to the third round, because I guess they don't have a second round pick, you still have plenty of capital. I mean, there's gonna I mean, legitimately. They're a good a good group of receivers is gonna fall to the late second, early third. Oh, yeah. Because there are so many in this draft. No doubt. Um, and it's going to be crazy. All right. What's the earliest you would draft Cooper to Gene? The Iowa, the white kid out of Iowa. Why are you going to do this to me? Here's the thing. His relative athletic score through the fucking roof, dog. You're talking about the top 1%. I mean, six. Oh, basically, we call him 6'1". Yeah. 202 pounds. 4'4", 240. 4'4", 340. 4'4", 540. A 39-inch vert. A 10-foot, 4-inch broad jump. They said he's only been clear for a month. He's already in great shape. P position drills, drills look great. I mean, I, I'll be honest. Look, I, I didn't watch a ton of Cooper DeGene because I fucking hated watching Iowa. But I'll take a early second on him. Look, when God was making Cooper DeGene and Keyshawn Booty, he accidentally got them like switched up at birth or whatever and gave all of Keyshawn Booty's athleticism to Cooper DeGene. Cooper's a freak, dog. I mean, he just forgot to tan him. That's yeah, what he, he forgot. These are some freaky numbers. I mean, I mean, here's the like, thing, bro. Cooper DeGene started playing college football, and God said, look to his right hand, and was like, yo, you ain't put him in the bed? The tanning bed? Bro, they just accidentally... You forgot? Bro, they just accidentally swapped the skill sets for him and Keyshawn Booty. Remember Keyshawn jumped that 27-inch vert? And ran like a four six four seven, like they accidentally forgot. They, uh, they made a super white guy. I switched can't, at birth. Sw exactly, literally Fucking Captain attribute. America himself, right there. Dog, the top one percent of corners since nineteen eighty seven. That's insane. I mean, honestly, if you take racism out of it, he's a first rounder. <laughs> he like, is. It is. It's hard to pull the trigger though. You know. <laughs> yeah, it's a white corner. It's just, it's I just, thought they only had two of them left at the San Diego Zoo. <laughs> it's. Just, it's so hard to pull the trigger. I wonder if GMs can even – they definitely joke about that kind of shit. I wonder what they say, though. It's like, you put all that shit up, you put it on the tape, and you're like, yeah, but – you're like, yeah, but what? You Say it. Say it. Yeah. Say it. He's a white guy, huh? Yeah. Sneaky fast. Right. Well coached. Plays Just as, hard. He's a technician. Right. Like, grinder, watches a ton of film. We can give you all the, the little clickbait – white guy uh, sayings bro i need i need the next like black guy update to come because these white guys are updating at a massive rate and it's like we need we need the next black update to hit did, did it hit with wemby is that what's going on <laughs> yeah it must have. let's let's make him eight feet tall with an 11 foot wingspan right fucking zach Eady is a fucking yeah is, like what's the next black update gonna look like because we might come out crazy zach crazy. i'm not gonna lie bro crazy i mean i guess the next black update looks like jeremiah smith right it so, is. that's that's fine bro we got the we got the next level the next level um when is the super did you answer what round you would draft him in? i said I, he's probably a late first round draft pick. okay i mean it, it, all jokes aside about the fact he's a white corner which yeah. is like i mean that is a unicorn a true unicorn um with that athletic score, those I mean, those times, those those stats, and his film. I mean, come on. I think I have him as cornerback three. I know this. If he four. doesn't, go, if he doesn't go in the first round, that is definitely because only because he's white. <laughs> like, there's no other answer in a league that they fall in love with fucking forty times and broad jumps and shit like that. He clears every fucking benchmark. Well, you know what they'll, they'll say. Cool Kool Aid ran a four four with a broken, whatever, okay. broken foot. Which I understand. He, he too should be a first rounder. Like, yeah, it yeah. Like, mean, I guess like how many first round corners are there? Because there, there's definitely three. The kid from Toledo and the two from Bama are all first round locks. No, I'm taking this kid over the kid, some kid from fucking Toledo. Hey, Jason Candle, he'd be doing it up over there. Who knows? I'm just saying. Um, but do you want to get a quick word from our partner? Well, let's do that then. We'll be right back after this.
Iron Menace Army, when we don't have ads, we just self-promote. They're kind of narcissistic, I guess. But if you love the show, you love the platform, you love the growth, where we're going, here's a great way for you to support us. Menace2Merch.com, the number two. We have like 10 or 12 items on there right, right now, the rebrand. You see the shirt I'm wearing, kind of the Menace Superman shirt. It's got the down the spine. It's got Menace to Sports, um, which you can see on the website. But um, we priced everything fairly low. This is more about promotion and kind of getting you guys – to rep our brand across the country. So we got a, we got female gear. We got a bath, a one piece bathing suit. Uh, don't, I actually need to take the two piece off. It's fucking awful. We got a sample. So don't order that, but we're, we're quality control right now. We got hoodies. We got cutoff shirts. We got workout shirts. This is a fitness shirt. It's outstanding. And I'm going to add more stuff this week. So there might be about 20 items. Um, takes a couple weeks to get to you, but go, go support us. Go to menace to and rock the brand. <clears throat> rock the brand hey it's good shit and I, I i already got a dm i forgot to put the color rush stuff on yesterday so tonight before bourbon and ball i will put the color rush stuff on the site i need to order some samples of that too i got buckeye colors coming out first then we're gonna do I, as much as buckeye fans were pissed about it we're gonna do michigan colors we have a nice michigan fan base here on this show and then we're gonna work through all the different uh the big 10 schools yeah the big 10 schools plus akron <laughs> the, plus the, akron the big 11 you want to see what gets zero sales? The Akron gear. I guarantee you it gets at least one sale. Because Chris is going to buy it. Absolutely. of fucking Lutely. <laughs> With the fucking kangaroo on there. What are they going to do? Sue me? <laughs> that would require them even, to have a legal team. They don't even have fucking lawyers. <laughs> they wouldn't see. Their head coach might wear it, actually. Here's a, here would be a really funny thing, Chris. We should put the Blocko on the front of a shirt and Menace to Sports on the, on the spine just to see how long it takes Ohio State to sue us. Oh, I would, lo- I would actually like to hang up a cease and desist letter. We should do that. Okay. Hey, if you're in, if you think we should do that, let me know yes or no in the chat. <laughs> I actually don't want to get sued. Ah, this, they'll just tell us to stop selling it at first, I think. That's uh, it's, it's pretty concerning. Um, Yeah, let's do Super Chats. Let's yeah, do let's, that. Let's do that. Let's do some of those. Cam, member Cam, thanks for the 10. Happy Titty Taco Tuesday. Titty Taco Tuesday. I can't believe you don't know who Sketch is. I don't know what the fuck Sketch Bro, is. When when do you see Cam next? Um, tomorrow, bro. When you see him, when you pick him up, I just want you to say this, brother, and that's it. And see what he does back to you. What is this from? I'm just saying. Just, just do. Just go to the car and say it, brother. The what's up, brother? Viral TikTok. This guy. Yeah, bro. He plays for the Texans. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I'm the evil Mr. Beast. All I do is take. No, not going for it. No. Gorky, thanks for the two. Remember Gorky? Edie got exposed. Bro, he had 37. I mean, he had 37 and what, 14 or something? 37 and 10, bro. He was hooping. I Look, mean, your brother in the chat knows who he is. I don't care. Special teams, special plays, special players. What the fuck are we doing? Damn. Thought you were hit. Nope. Cole, thanks for the 10. With Chip calling the plays with his scheme and the read option, you would you would think Will Howard has the edge with his legs, right? I think Julian fits Ryan's scheme. He had with CJ very well. That is an interesting point. Yeah, it is. Um, don't get me wrong. I think they they will run some zone read stuff. Shit, they did, they did with every quarterback that didn't want to run the ball. But make no mistake, this is not Chip Kelly's offense. Like, he's coming in to absolutely add some wrinkles, maybe – evolve some 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 packages some schemes but this offense was not broken the quarterback was and and like they're gonna run what they run and they're gonna accentuate the skill set of whoever the starter is when julian's saying one day is the starter which i believe will happen in the future they're not gonna run that much zone read if will howard's the guy that's his big strength he's the best runner in the room maybe outside of lincoln and lincoln's not gonna be the quarterback so uh, Whoever gives them the best opportunity to advance the ball down the field and put that bitch in the end zone, they will build what they do around it. You think that's the number one thing they've been tracking this spring? Like who gets the most first downs and who gets the most? Absolutely. Because it's like, I, I do I do wonder about that. Like, how do you track everything? Like, how do you weight things? Yeah, you just have to. And part of it's a feel. Because that would You're be. You're out there watching and sometimes it just feels like the offense is more efficient. It moves better. With, a, with one guy at the helm compared to another. like Because that makes me think about, like, last year, like, Kyle McCord may have thrown for more yards in practice, but, like, the offense kept moving with Devin Brown, mm-hmm. and we saw how different the run game looked with him out there. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Just they they never punted. 
stuff that wow. doesn't show up on the stat sheet, right? That's usually a good th- good thing. Yeah, usually. Elks, thanks for the two. Remember, Elks, is that no dude? Gmo is a <laughs> friend not foe. Oh, Elks hates Gmo because Gmo blocked him yeah, or they, something. They do have an ongoing beef. Someone asked me today, someone said today they just found out that Ohio State um has beef with Miami on Twitter. It's like we got to introduce you to other <laughs> players. It's like instead of Game of Thrones, it's Game of Spaces, right? Right. <laughs> hey, if you if you're bored, jump into space sometime. Yeah, you'll you'll learn the lure. There's like some big players, and there's like like you know, some little subgroups. The Wolverkanes is the one that is kind of running running shit now. It's the Wolverine, it's the Hurricane fans that hate Ohio State, so they click up with the Michigan fans. Gotta love it. Yeah, the, the UM, the UM team. Hey, just remember Ohio State won that game fair and square in 2002. <laughs> Bitches. <laughs> <laughs> it was pass wow. interference. It was. Keel, thank you for the two. Remember, Keel. Better rivalry. FSU, UF, or FSU, Miami? Ooh, that's I'd say probably FSU, Miami. Um, but I obviously never been a part of that. But uh, I, it seems like it's way more toxic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like way more toxic. It does. It, it does seem a little bit more toxic. My the, the game I'm really looking forward to this year, Zach, I think uh, Miami opens up with the game against Florida. Mm-hmm. That's, that's the opener. And those two coaches, seats a little warm. What? Someone's got to get that shit done for real. Someone's got to win the game. Yeah. And Florida fans this offseason have not been talking. No, they can't. They know what's coming. Well, Miami fans shouldn't be talking either. No, they shouldn't, but they're ignorant as fuck. I would lo- want nothing more than Florida to beat Miami week one. Jess, oh. I'll just I'll tune into a space, and I won't show up to work. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just play the space on the show. <laughs> I'll definitely be here. Percy, thanks for the 10. My guys, what's up? Hey, Zach, was you at BG with Urban? If so, that QB Josh Harris and that offense was historically great. People forget to oh, mention yeah. they were must-see TV back in the day. Were you there? Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Josh, I know I'm really good friends with Josh Harris. And he, Josh, he lives, he lives in Columbus. Um, he was the quarterback, so he was older than I was. I think he was a senior when I was a freshman, but I still know him really well. And I was there. Well, Urban's last year was my freshman year. And then Urban left, and I skedaddled. Skedaddled. Bowling Green. I'm trying to think of what players I know. Oh, bro, didn't they have a really good offense when you were at Ohio State, too? Mm-hmm. With uh, Roger Lewis. Oh, yeah, the receiver. That yeah, the receiver. Got yeah. falsely accused of rape and was committed to us. Yeah, and he ended up committing there. He ended up uh, going crazy out there with that quarterback. He yeah. threw for like three or 4,000 yeah. yards, and, and and I think Roger got drafted by the Giants. Yeah, he did. And that was the uh, – I think it was the Dino Babers offense. Yeah, wow. That just unlocks that. memories. I remember in college, this girl in one of my argumentation classes saying that she dated Roger. There you go. That was her flex. Yeah, was- I was there. So I came in with a, a kid, if you remember him, Omar Jacobs, who was fucking like Mac player of the year after he he re- came after Josh Harris. Josh Harris finished his career, was like a you know Heisman finalist, like seventh or eighth on the list. Bowling Green got ranked in, in the top 25. And then he, Josh went to the NFL and, and then Omar Jacobs took over. Yeah. Delray Beach, Florida. Didn't get recruited by anybody because he broke his leg before his uh, junior year, senior year, or something like that. Mm. Great mm. player. Jordan, thank you for the five. She was hating, but let's not act like pros don't go hard on rookies. Pat Bev versus Lonzo Ball day one. Uh, he was targeting him. JJ will throw for 4K, by the way. JJ's not throwing for 4K next year. And I do, <laughs> I do hear you on that side of it. Yeah, but Lonzo Ball was flagrant. Like, he was out yeah. there like that. Like, especially his fucking douchebag daddy and everything. Like, it was easy to not like him. What is, I mean, Caitlin Clark kind of has, I would just call it confidence. Maybe a little cockiness, but not like fucking BBB, the Bull brothers and all that bullshit. Well, also, and I'll say I'll push back and say it's a little bit different. Pat Bev, his whole career is based on being an irritator. It's different than it's not like LeBron or Kobe or Steph said, "Oh yeah, like we're about to we're about to go crazy on dude." They just on the court, they just go hard against. Yeah, them. like we didn't really hear talking from the league superstars. Pat Bev is just an irritator. Pat Bev's always been talking. Oh, that's always that's always been his thing. Always. But yes, vets do go hard on rookies. That's common. I just didn't like the the hate on national television when she's literally they, gearing up for a natty. They do it. Once they're in the league, right? Even if it's a little shit talking, like Lonzo Ball wasn't in college, mm-hmm. and Pat Bev was going after him. Like, dude, she's not even in the league yet. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, he didn't, say, and he didn't say anything. He just fouled him on the court his first game. It's like 
It's like much different. Like if someone were to ask Kobe or LeBron about a player that was currently getting ready for a national title, they would not. The first thing they would they would not say, "Oh, reality's coming." No, they like would say, Zach Eady. All of a sudden, LeBron's gonna tweet about Zach Eady. Yeah. Fuck, he's gonna be like, "Oh, is that that goofy big guy that's yeah. at one of them Big Ten schools?" Gonna, like you wouldn't even know who the fuck you're talking about. Yeah, it's like, and he's the one that reality is coming to. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my goodness! And J- he said JJ's gonna throw for four thousand yards. No, he's not. He did he throw for four thousand yards his entire career? <laughs> That's a great question. You want to hear a crazy stat? I do. Julian Fleming, in his entire career at Ohio State, Zach has <laughs> under a thousand yards. Hmm. That is number one receiver in the country, right? Yeah, isn't that just a nuts thing to to yeah. hear? That's wild. She was fucking me up. Because, uh, you know, you know why I found that out? Because people were trying to flame Austin Mack to me. And I was like, you're fried. He's got more yards at Ohio State than Julian Fleming did. And we played six receivers. Yeah. So he played he played half as much as Julian Fleming. That, that's, one of my, that's one of my favorite, like, trump cards. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, here or there. Space is legend. But it comes to this mic, I will humble him. Word to Cole, no apology. <laughs> Plant, thanks for the 20. What group would you take? QBs, <laughs> CJ. Marv, Michael Thomas, Garrett Wilson, Ted Ginn for returning kickoffs too, or QBs, Mac Jones, Devontae Smith, Julio Jones, Jameson Williams, Jalen Waddle also for returning kicks. I'm, I'm gonna go with the Buckeyes. Just that, that could be a homer take. It's not even a homer take, bro. Like, I'm sorry, Mac Jones had a, had a big time year. He's not near the quarterback. CJ Stroud was terms of ball placement. No, like, not near the quarterback. You pair that up with with Mike and Marv. Yeah, come on, that's alien, alien time with Garrett in the slot and Ted Ginn as your as your roast, sub deep yeah. guy and your and your returner. Come on, man. Yeah, that's that's diabolical. Good. Now, I, don't get me wrong. That bottom group's crazy. I mean, the bottom scary. group's crazy. I think I think the reason why I pick Ohio State is because of CJ. Yeah, then that over Mac Jones, but you got to play with a running back too. So who who they got? Derrick Henry and we got a, we got Zeke or what is it? I mean, shit, I'm still taking Ohio State. What? Well, we we knew you were. That's what? why they asked me. No, we knew who you were picking. No, nah, that with that group, they're definitely rocking with TJ Yeldon because that's what Bama does. That's the Bama way. Play <laughs> TJ. If you want to win, put TJ in. <laughs> Rupert, love your name. Thanks for the five. Chris, got to give you your flowers. Y'all been killing it this offseason. Bright future in this business. Salute, young king. Hashtag three three zero. Thank you for the flowers. I think if, there you go. I was I was getting some flowers yesterday for my uh for my solar eclipse post. <laughs> that was awesome. It was amazing. <laughs> Truly amazing. Shout out to the glasses. I told my mom I drove with those home. The look I got, bro. Like, I just <laughs> thought I drove with those on. Just try to be safe. Yeah, I was trying to be safe. Didn't want to didn't want to get zapped. I my mean, bro, I do feel like I unlocked a third eye though. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? You know, bro, when you look at the light too long and you like blink yeah, and you oh, get yeah. those spots, bro. Oh yeah. I got it, bro. But it's like telling me it's like that's so raven almost. <laughs> uh oh. That was our, that was Rupert. Rupert, I love your name. Charged up podcast. Thanks for the two. Rest in paradise. Ohio State legend Dwayne Haskins. For real. Man. So I don't know if you know this, but my first um my first radio show, I was a surprise guest on. My PD pulled some slick shit and threw me on. And they were talking. It was right before the Ohio State season. They were talking about how um Ohio State was going to downgrade the quarterback position. Mm. Um, after JT? Yeah, after JT. <sighs> And at this point, I was, like, knee-deep in it, yeah. like, message board warrior, watching every practice clip. I was I was Ohio State guy. And I got on that show, and I, they only gave me two segments, and I ripped that dude to, sh- to shreds. <laughs> Bro, quit. He quit? He quit. It was – yeah, it was it was called the Ben and Ben Show. <laughs> ben and Ben Show. And then it was Ben and Chris. <laughs> <laughs> so, lost to Ben. And then, and then the other Ben left, too, and it was just Chris. <laughs> So that's uh, I took my victory lap 11 times that year. I bet. Sean, thanks for the five or 10, excuse me. Pate saying a premier defensive player who is going to be on magazine covers is on the market and his team doesn't know it. Who is it? It better not be downs. Hmm. I would say I'm going to just take a wild guess. Harold Perkins. Oh. Brian Kelly's the type of motherfucker to rub you the wrong way. No diddy. No diddy. <laughs> I'll say Harold Perkins. And guess what? Really wants to play in Columbus. Can mm. you imagine? <laughs> That's going to get cut up. Can you imagine? All right. Hear me out. Conspiracy theory time. <laughs> we're going to talk about later. What if? What What if it's Sonny Styles? Could be. What if Sonny's the odd man out? 
Mm, could be. It sure, it sure sounds like C.J. Hicks is turning a corner. Sonny Styles has moved down, been repping at the two at the will, kind of been in a little bit of a battle there. Stop it. I'm coming at everyone's throat if Sonny Styles transfers because he's the odd man out. Someone's – I'm just, hey, hey now. I'm just kidding, gang. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> there is going to be an odd man out, though, at Ohio State. Well, yeah. Don't, I mean, no, or no you could rotate. A and it's right. a hell of a concept they should learn. You can rotate, guys. If you got three that are really, really good and can play, mm -hmm. keep them fresh. Rotate them around a little bit. I was just thinking about premier players that are going to be, like, on a – on, on a magazine cover like who like who are the other premier premier players at least in the big 10 will johnson that's, will johnson? A, that's a premier player yep. um and obviously he's been tampered Ma with and it's mason no graham mason graham is mason graham pretty enough though to be on a, on a magazine cover usually uh, like usually the magazine covers they want like the 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 update the update the good they want someone they don't like d tackles on mm. magazine covers no, they don't like they don't story. like they don't like the big uglies on the cover no. or else joe alt would have been on plenty of covers right you know mike hall would have been on some covers there's an update for you though jj mccarthy threw for over six thousand yards in his career okay um who told you that i looked it up okay well fuck jj three thousand <laughs> uh, how many air yards how many yards per attempt <laughs> jesus how God. many yards per game just gotta air find, yards. find an analytic that, <laughs> where he can spin his and uh, his jj hate Find me when I'm trying to I'm trying to spin it. Um, what other premier player though? Like at least in the Big Ten. Oh, Mason Graham's good looking dude. Is he? Yeah, put him on a cover. They're not putting that big ugly on the cover, bro. You know it. Put him on the cover. Come on, bro. Look at that guy. 6'3, 320 from Anaheim, California California. Stop it. Yeah, they got a picture of him with the ball. Come on, man. Put him on a cover. Bro, he literally has a club on the other hand. They're not putting it that dude on the cover, <laughs> dog. <laughs> You have to you have to be a freak athlete to be on the cover. No, I don't I don't know who it could be. Obviously, that was just that was no inside information. That was just like a guess because Pate, you know, Pate does a really good job with the with the vague tweets because he doesn't want to yeah. blow up I the mean, spot. Here's here's ESPN's top defensive backs. Mm. I can give you that list. Mm -hmm. They got Will Johnson, okay. Caleb Downs, Benjamin yeah. Morrison at Notre Dame, Denzel Burke, Xavier Watts at Notre Dame, Sebastian Castro at Iowa, Andrew Makuba at okay. Texas. And Jabbar Jabbar Muhammad for the kid from Oregon. Yeah, well, Jabbar already transferred. Yeah, he I, already think, tra I, think, I think he's locked in at Oregon. Yeah, he's he he just transferred. I don't know who it would be. But shit, now you never know. Conspiracy theorists get this thing cooking, right? Get it going. Get it cooking. Um, Kenny, thanks for the five. In your opinion, who has the biggest pipe? Not doing what it. What the fuck? Did he? Did he or Brian Griner? I hate you guys. <laughs> I mean what that with all happened? the disrespect, Kenny. What that was the most happened? insane shit. Hey, Kenny, when I see you, I'm poking you in the eye because that was out of hand. Out of pocket. That was out of hand. You, you want to answer it, though? No. Fuck. I don't Whoa, fucking hey, know. Whoa, hey. I'm just, hey, you know, he, he spent good money for that question. I'm, I'm, I got a mock draft here up here for you. Ready? Ooh, for 2020. 2025 mock draft. So okay. if we're only going defensive players, we'll go the first guy taking Travis Hunter at Colorado, not leaving. Mm -hmm. Michael Williams at DN at Georgia, not leaving. Harold Perkins, my pick from LSU. <laughs> Walter Nolan, the D tackle from Ole Miss. I don't okay. know. Ole Miss is well. He just got there though. Well, like he just got. It. They said you can transfer whenever you want. Yeah, you can transfer. You might not like it. Trevor eleven times. Benjamin Morrison, we talked about. Well, they got Drew Aller going ninth. Told you, bro. When Drew Aller is a first round pick, I have a steak dinner betting on it, bro. I, I hear you, bro. He's going to be a first rounder if he throws for twenty five hundred yards and thirty touchdowns. He's a first round pick. I'm probably he probably will be. Yeah, because he's got that the enormous arm. Yeah. Ethan Burke, D end at Texas. Okay. Mason Graham, D tackle at, at Michigan. Patrick Payton, D end at Florida State. I, don't, I the Florida State culture feels too strong yeah. right now. Ty Leak, they got at fifteenth. How about that? Yeah. I mean, we, this I don't even know this site, WalterFootball.com. So this could be all garbage. I'm just trying to find names. That's what that's those are the names right there. If I'm you're just, talking about a guy that could be on a magazine, you figure there'd be first rounders, right? I'm, I'm just saying, is Sunny Styles magazine material? Oh, now yeah. he, but he's also an Ohio State legacy guy. He's staying. He's staying. Just jokes. Just jokes. And I only said him because CJ Hicks isn't like a big enough name to be on a. Yeah, I'm with you. He wouldn't be on a cover. I mean, the rest of these guys, Will Johnson, no. Malachi Starks, Ooh. no. Gentry Williams, a corner from Oklahoma. Don't even know him. Well, speaking of getting rubbed the wrong way by a coach, no Diddy. Um, you didn't mention the other linebacker, Abdul Carter. I mean, James Franklin rubs people the wrong way all the time. Yeah, that's true. Every day. Jordan Hancock at 29th. First oh, rounder. Sonny Styles at 30. Damn, Ohio State's got like 
four or five projected first rounders on this list. Well, you know, what? my my question for the Monday after the spring game is how many first rounders are on this team? Well, I just told you five. Okay. Well, thank you for answering that and blowing up Monday show per usual. <laughs> In fact, while I regroup, let's get a quick word from our partner. Let's do that. We'll be right back after this. What makes this platform different from others outside of the fact we're unfiltered and I actually worked in college football and might might know a little bit about the sport and about the game is we open the doors and open the windows and let you inside under the hood in college football. And the best way to do that is our film breakdowns. If YouTube would let us put them out publicly, we would make it all free, but they dig us with a copyright every time. Bourbon and balls are off season project. Every Tuesday night, I pick a bourbon and at 8 PM Eastern standard time, we go live and do a live breakdown, interactive, you ask questions. It's all 22 coaches film, so it's not film you, you can see anywhere else. It's not TV copy. This is truly what coaches use, what I used for 15 years of coach college football. And we break down a topic. We've done a Will full Will Howard breakdown, breaking down his game, what he was going to add to the Buckeyes. We did the Michigan National Championship game. There's over 200 game breakdowns in our library. If you want to learn college football at an, in an entirely different way, it's only 20 bucks a month. Or the best deal, if you want to do it, is you can lock it in right now with a 10% discount on patreon.com forward slash menace to sports. And you can get a whole year's worth. That'll include all next season when we break down up to five games a week. We really give you the insight and information you need to be knowledgeable about college football. Because several times, a, a, a sack will happen. And you watch on TV, you're like, God, this O-line sucks. Then you get the coaches film and watch. And they blocked the five guys they were supposed to block, the running back just released and was supposed to block a blitzing corner. It was really on the running back, but in your mind, you think the O-line sucks. It's always good to have quality information, and it's entertaining as shit. Drink a little bourbon, hang out with us all offseason, and then get ready for the 2024 college football season. Possibly a nice little run for the Buckeyes. On Patreon, links in the bio. Come hang out with us. That is tonight, bourbon and ball. We're going to break down another, another Will Howard game tape. So just remember... As you watch other shows that want to talk about what guys can do, what they can't do, how good they are. I mean, I would listen for three months about how Will Howard was definitely the starter and Devin Brown needed to transfer. I went, instead of listening to some fucking beady-eyed fucking redhead, I went to the film. I said, maybe he is. That'd be sweet. And I watched the film. You don't get reality from watching shows. We try to tell you reality, but you really want to see Will Howard? Let's drink some bourbon and watch his ass tonight. 8 o'clock Eastern Central Time or Eastern Standard Time. Almost fucked that up. I did fuck that up, I guess. Do you know what you're drinking tonight? No, I haven't picked a bottle yet. Okay, we'll throw suggestions in the chat because, you know, we... Uh... I got a couple good ones that I could pick from, though, because I got a thing where, like, if it's, like, a really good bottle, like, I have to have two to drink it. BM5 Edits knows what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. um, so I have... I On Thursday, I'll, I'm getting another Weller, Weller 12. I have two Weller Foolproofs. Um... I don't have another CYPB or Weller single barrel yet, so I can, those are those are off the table. I don't know what should I open. I'm curious in the chat. Yeah, let them know. Let them know. Um, Dallin Hayden. Now that we've had a little bit of time to reflect on kind of what that means for the room, obviously the news did break yesterday when we were on the show that he was entering the portal, meaning he will not be practicing and probably won't be playing in this. Will not absolutely not be playing in the spring <laughs> game. Um, you know, Tony Alford's catching a lot of blame for him yeah, hitting naturally. the portal. Um, which I, you know, okay, it, it is what it is. There's a belief that his mismanagement of Down Hayden is part of the reason he is in the portal because um, they did try to redshirt him last year, I believe, and that would have been like a Michael Thomas redshirt. No, 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 no. He and his family asked to redshirt last year. Make no mistake about it. Nobody fucked that up and tried to redshirt him and pissed him off. That kid is leaving because he doesn't have a clear plan. He doesn't see a clear plan for his involvement this season. And he really was only stayed, only stayed after the season. He was going to transfer. He only stayed because of Tony Alford. And Tony left, he left. So I, you could blame Tony Alford. He left, and now Dallin's leaving. Mm -hmm. That's definitely his fault. If he'd have stayed, I don't think Dallin leaves. But Tony didn't the, mismanage him last year or anything like that. The kid doesn't, the kid, the kid and Ryan Day don't really get along. Period. He doesn't trust Ryan Day. And now this deep into spring, he and he gave it a shot. And this deep into spring, he's like, yeah, I'm out. Like, I don't trust what's going on here. I don't want to trust my future on this path. That's simple as that. Honestly, I don't even, I'm trying to, you know, I do hear it's easy to say he got mismanaged. I'm a little bit confused on, like, how, I guess, because 
how much was he supposed to play? Like was was he ever like was he ever in the two deep? And I think honestly the plan was for him to play this year. I think the thing that put a wrench in the plan was obviously Tony leaving. But the other part of it is in what plan does Quinshawn Judkins come here? Yeah, right. There's there's <laughs> no world where we thought Quinshawn Judkins was coming. And this, this is listen, this is a Ryan Day Dallin Hayden issue. I said it when it happened. I said it, I mean, it's I, I could tell that without talking to anybody. This was Ryan Day and Dallin Hayden. They 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 didn't see eye to eye, he didn't trust them, whatever the reason whatever the, the cause of it, he left because he didn't have his guy running his room anymore and he didn't trust the head coach. That's simple as that. Yeah, I, I really don't think there was any mismanagement with Dallin. I just think that Quinchon Judkins enter, entering the portal and coming here. No, but there's, was, there's a clip, though. I mean, not to cut you off. I saw a clip on when we were doing film breakdowns. There was a clip where Tony put him in and Ryan flipped his shit on Tony for putting him in. So, oh. And I remember it vividly. Ryan didn't want him to be in. He didn't trust. He, and going back to the trust is a two-way street. Right. He didn't trust Dallin because of his his just understanding of pass pro and knowing his assignments of pass pro. And we broke that down a whole a whole episode on it like, during the season. Like, this is not news to us. And if you've been subscribed and watching the film with us, it's not that surprising. Once Tony left, it was like, oh, I, I bet that kid probably is thinking about leaving. Mm hmm. Hmm. I did not know that. I guess I'll have to go back through it and, and find that moment. That that is that is really interesting. Um, you got to think that right now they're going to be in the portal four. You know, in in the transfer portal four running back. Do you think they'll? Is their room attractive enough to land a transfer portal running back? I mean, maybe a young kid. It's going to be a really young kid. I mean, and, and what young kid is going to transfer now? Why not play the season and then transfer? Especially hearing how good James Peoples has been so far. Yeah, too. I, I, I think they're going to be James Peoples is going to have to grow up and be the third back. He's mm -hmm. going to have to. And you want that, right? Don't you want if the, if James Peoples is going to be a great back? Wouldn't you expect that he'd be good enough to be that third that goes in? Maybe injury, he's has to become the second punch, like Zeke was, J.K. was, like great ones are. So if he's going to be a great one, you hope he's ready to be the third. Fuck. Yeah. The, the chat doesn't agree. The chat thinks that uh, that he should have played over Chip and Mayan. Um, about down Hayden, I I thought I don't oh I don't disagree with that at all. Well, I, I, I think it's coach's job to get him ready. And if he doesn't know pass pro, what the fuck are we doing? I agree with that. Yeah. Well, I guess uh, maybe I'm biased towards Chip because he's from Akron, but he ran for like six yards of carry last year. Yeah, Chip was good. I like Chip, but but Mayan, I agree. Okay, and then and then I think Mayan tore. You know, they run that thing like the CIA. I think Mayan Williams tore his ACL, I believe, and had surgery or something like that. Um, that's why he missed the back half. Um, I, I believe I believe that's what happened. So, hmm. Hmm. Down Hayden. I wonder where he's going to go. I think, what, Missouri might be an option, Tennessee, and then Michigan. Yeah, those uh, three make sense. I think he needs to go to Michigan. I think I, th I would love to see him in Tennessee. Tennessee. Fuck well, yeah. Well, my thing is, like, if pass pro is an issue. They don't pass pro. It's all okay. up-tempo, no huddle. Fuck it, get the ball out. <laughs> all right, fuck it, get the ball out. Go go be a Tennessee, and he'll be a legacy guy there. <laughs> Someone said he's Ole Miss, the player to be named later in the trade. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> of Corey Dennis, thing didn't work out. Right. <laughs> Corey Dennis in the coach's transfer portal. Um, This year, how would you – wait, so two things. Under Coach Locke, do you think the running back rotation will be more expanded than it was last year under Tony Alford? No. I, I mean – you're going to get a heavy dose of a one-two punch. It's going to be pretty evenly split. Mm -hmm. And if a third guy goes in, it's it's going to be for reason, especially now that Dallin's gone. If Dallin leaves, you're not going to throw James Peoples in in a you know in a meaningful snap just just to give both guys a break. Like you don't need that. You're going to have a nice one-two punch, and late in games or barring an injury, you might have to play that third. But you're going to get a nice solid dose. Of Trey and Quinshawn. Who's going to have more catches this year? The running backs or the tight ends? Ooh, probably, hopefully the running backs. I mean, I don't even think that should be close. You know, last year it wasn't close. No. Last year the tight ends had far more catches than oh, the yeah. running backs. Yeah, but I mean, they, they Chip Kelly, that's the one thing he's got to get done. Mm -hmm. We got to block the perimeter and then check the ball down. Throw some swing screens. Like, get those kids the ball in space. Yeah, I, I, I've been saying it forever. Travion Henderson is a really good back. He is so dynamic in space. Get him in space. Make the hold the receivers accountable to block so we can get him in space. That has to happen. Has to. I talk about 
you know, security blankets hitting home runs. I don't, Trey wasn't a security blanket, but he had a moment when he caught that check down in the flat and housed it. And it was like, put him on kickoff, put him on punt, throw like, him the ball. Do more something. of this, just more of this. Right. However it happens, more of this. It's like, we're, I don't want to say wasting, but brother, we're wasting six targets a game on Cade Stover. Can two of those or three of those go to Trey a year? A, a, I, bet a you get more, I bet you get more production. That's what I'm saying. Like, I would rather throw a check down to Trey two yards downfield than throw a a shot. They're not not a shot, but throw an eight yard pass play to Kate Stover. I think if you, you do that, if you ch- if you throw it to those running backs eight times a game, mm-hmm. I'm guaranteeing two big plays. Yep, that's where I'm at. That's game changing. And if you throw all those to to Kate Stover, I think he's great. Did a lot for the program. I don't think you're getting those massive plays. Oh God, no. I mean, bro, runs like he's running at high heels. Yes, Love him. he's run. Definitely runs like he's got a bad back, but we're, we're here for it. Um, Julian saying this from this from Tony Gerderman. I got this. Got this. Uh, he, he broke down all the times that guys lost their black stripe and when they lost it. Julian saying now becomes the quickest ever in Ohio State history amongst the quarterbacks to lose his black stripe. It's kind of fucked up to look at, and it, it leads me at two places. When Zach walked in, first thing I asked you. Is it just easy to lose a black stripe these days, or we just got a lot of generational motherfuckers coming through those doors? I mean, first of all, you look at this list. They're all in the fall prior to Julian saying. Mm -hmm. They're all in the fall. And even then, like, and and it's the the clock has moved up. Going back all the way to C.J. Stroud, October 21st. You're talking, what, week seven of the season? And he lost it at the same time as Jack Miller? That's kind of fucking bizarre. Kyle McCord, August 12th. Devin Brown, October 6th. It's like, I feel like that this is the transfer portal. Like Dwayne Haskins, August 17th, Joe Burr, all of them were minimally two weeks into training camp. Yeah. I mean, Joe Burrow, JT Barrett, Cardale, all of them. And now Julian say, and a lot of those guys early enrolled. Some of those guys did. So all of them early enrolled, except for Haskins, Burroughs, and Lincoln. Burrow and Lincoln. So except for those three, everybody else got there in the winter. Joe Burrow had his on for a full fucking year. Full year is better than every motherfucker on his list. Joe Burrow is the best name on that list, and he had his stripe on for over a year. (laughs) Joe Burrow is literally the slow-cooked meat. You know, just age it, then cook it. He is the aged Wagyu. He is. (laughs) Shout out to Joe Burrow. (laughs) Zach, is there a chance that Julian Sand is just the the chosen? That that, that feels really fast, dog. He's got to start then, right? If he's that good. To lose the stripe that early, he he better be winning the the competition. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, what the fuck are you taking the stripe? Oh, he's ready to be a Buckeye. He's not even ready to play quarterback yet. What? I what I know. I know what's happening. The black stripe ha- is what it's always been. We just lessen the standards because of the transfer portal. We're trying to give guys, throw guys a bone, make them feel like they're progressing, and we have to do it earlier because guess what? It is April 9th in six days. A little door opens. It's called the transfer portal. And let a kid be in his feelings for a minute. He might jump in that bitch for no reason. So, like, give him a, give him a nugget. Give him a, throw him a bone. Make him feel good about their progress and their trajectory so you keep him out of the portal. I think that's what's happening here. Yeah, I definitely think the black stripe has changed a little bit. I mean, when you look at kind of the, the fastest black stripes in Ohio State history, you're now thinking of like the, the, the list is like Julian Sand. Um, Jeremiah Smith, Carnell Tate, all, of course, like being Ohio State guys. Now, if you do have that many generational guys, I'm expecting, uh, you know, maybe the greatest show on turf next year, (laughs) if that's what those guys are. Now, um, I think also what this does is send a message to Aaron Nolan because the only only other time you had two quarterbacks in the same class come in together was that C.J. Stroud, Jack Miller class. They took the stripes off on the same day. The same exact day. Because you know what Aaron Nolan's thinking right now. Damn, I came in with this dude same day, same time. Mm-hmm. No shit, I got here first. True, yeah, he got yeah, yeah he, he got here earlier. Yeah, and he goes to position meetings, and when they leave, they all go grab their helmets, and he's the only one with that black electrical tape on that bitch. Mm-hmm. And that that'll get a young kid in his feelings real quick. So, I mean, we're going to we're going to find out what Aaron Nolan is made of. If this is, becomes the ultimate motivator, that's a good thing. If yeah, what are you going to do? If it's not the ultimate motivator, then this quarterback thing may work itself out faster than we thought it would. 
That's fucking quick, though. I just can't get over how fucking fast that is, especially when all you hear about is like how complex the Ohio State offense is. And the fact that CJ Stroud and Jack Miller didn't lose theirs till October yeah. is is fucking nuts. This is wild, but it's it it's, it's it's being used differently. And that's mm-hmm. chalk it up to the change in college football, I guess. Do you think he should be considered for this quarterback competition this year? Or do you still... Yeah, if he's good enough, hell yeah. Okay. Well, I guess I, guess I, I just think and wonder about how important this year is for Ryan Day to win a national title about like do, do you feel good you know a make or break year starting the true freshman I mean because for Clemson that wasn't a make or break year for them no. that wasn't like they already had the title Deshaun Watson already brought them one yeah um and they were they were a team with with a ridiculous roster and they didn't really have a quarterback battle and they also weren't rolling reps between six guys five no. guys I, I think this year is truly it's not a make or break year for a natty I mean that would be I think ideal. It's make or break to get to the natty. It's a make or break to beat Michigan. Okay, he's got to win the Big Ten. If he, if he beats Michigan, wins the Big Ten, let the playoffs happen. You know, if he gets if you get a bye, you might catch a, a really good team. You know, I, I don't think that's anything fireable. Mm-hmm. They're not going to fire a guy that just beat Michigan and won the Big Ten. If he does that, trajectory's back on course. Do you worry that they potentially wasted a lot of meaningful reps this spring with how many quarterbacks they tried to get reps with the ones? No, they're, no, not really. Okay, I guess I guess I have my concern that like, like over over there in Nebraska they have a clear pecking order. Someone's getting a bulk of the reps, and he's able to develop at a different rate. Mm-hmm. It feels like at Ohio State we're trying to get Devin Brown a lot of the reps with the ones. We're trying to get Will Howard some reps with the ones. But I guess yesterday was with the threes, um, which is which is That's weird. Wild. And then uh, Julian Sang, you're trying to get him reps. And then Lincoln Keenholz, you're also trying to get reps with the ones. It just feels like you're wasting a chance to build really good chemistry because you're trying to roll these guys. And I guess the way they're rolling it is like every like two or three reps, then you switch. Two or three reps, we switch. It's tough to get a rhythm, get a groove. But it's spring. Okay. It's spring. It's fine. This is all about just kind of identification, learning the offense, especially for Will Howard, learning the new wrinkles Chip Kelly brings in, and just getting better. But th- this, this shit's going to change once summer hits. Yeah. Yeah, what's what once summer hits. So what are these last two practices like before the spring game, Zach? Are they real light? Is it more walkthroughs? Do you think they told the team the format of the games? I mean, I this I mean you're still practicing, you're still getting work in. Mm-hmm. Um, do some situational work, and then they're gonna have their one practice for the coaches clinic, which is a ton of individual, a ton of just drill work to show the coaches. And it's a it's a great practice to get get some extra work in. Um, but it's it's kind of you're you're Still trying to get some things accomplished, but spring's pretty much in the books. Yeah. I'm interested to see what we're going to see in the spring game, especially from the receivers and what receivers play with who. Um, I'm not expecting Brandon Innes to play in the spring game. I am not expecting um, – I'm expecting Mecca to maybe play one or two drives. Obviously, he's an older guy with the ankle injury that he yeah. had before. You want to keep him healthy. It's like, how much do you want to play Jeremiah? Right. Like, do you want to, do you want to give the fans what they want by potentially yeah, risking I getting mean- hurt? I mean, there's always that potential. I would contend yeah. that there's more potential in practice than the spring game. But okay. but you got to be smart. And so I think you could see Bryson Rogers and Ballard both have big days. And then the uh, and that's where they come. I yeah, told you about them. That's what's spring gonna game celebrities. Mm-hmm. Jaden Ballard goes for 180 with three touchdowns, and it's like Jaden Ballard is a dude. And I'm not saying he's not, but be careful falling in love with with spring game celebrities. What's going to be wild, bro, is if it's not Bryson or Jaden Ballard that becomes a spring game celebrity. Like, what if it's fucking Kojo? What if Kojo just catches a oh, ball? Is that, what about that? Is that guy Clinksdale still there? Uh, Keon Graves? No, oh, Clinksdale. Scottsdale? Sure, Scott Stocksdale. <laughs> Re- yeah, he's still there. Yeah, make him, him the make him the celebrity. Him, Adolph, and then let the him go hit some diner. sorority bitches on <laughs> Saturday night. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> That you know what? That's what it's gonna be. It's gonna be what? What do they say? I, I don't want to see you throwing prayer hands in the end zone, then going smoking black and mild <laughs> <laughs> on the corner with some liquor. <laughs> shout oh, out to Nick Saban. Shout out to Nick Saban. Zach, when it's the super chats, and then get you out of here. Let's do um, it. Speed. Thank you for the five member speed. Uh, Brian Kelly equals innovator. Ryan Day equals disciple and best quarterback developer. Together, I don't give a fuck. D are officially on notice. I don't care who the quarterback is. I hope we get sexual on all. Same. I feel like I was reading out of a calculator. That was crazy. <laughs> Kenny, thanks for the five. If you had to get you, you put this, he sent it twice. I swear. I swear I didn't. I swear Chris. to say no, bro. He, he sent it twice. Look, there's the first one. There's the second one. They're different. If you had to guess, Kenny, right. that is for your your fantasies to yeah. figure out. It, 
Kenny, who do you think it is? Go ahead. We'll let the chat answer. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Fire up a Twitter poll, somebody. I'm not going to do it, so quit asking. Quit asking. Um, Stone Face, thanks for the five. I never hear about David Boston being one of the best wide receivers all time for Ohio State. He absolutely was. Mm -hmm. He absolutely was. Freak. Freak. Emily, thanks for the five. Air seemed to have worked hard all spring break working out training. Any update on how he's progressing? I haven't. I haven't heard anything about him. I know he's not repping a ton. I know that obviously there's not a ton of reps to go around. It's hard to rep that many guys in the spring, and I heard that he's been the odd man <laughs> out so far. That can always change. Just, mm -hmm. he, if, if that's his response, the kid's got a chance. You would know, right? I might. T. Shaw, member, thanks for the five. Michigan, color rush, black, white stripes, or straight prison orange? I mean, you're going to have to drop an orange colorway, though. You know that, right? Yeah, that's fine. That's a good question, though. We should do something. Yeah, something funny. Something funny like that? Some meme stuff. Bro, can, yeah. we put, can we put me in the sunglasses on a, on a shirt? Yes. Let's go. Let's go. I'm trying to have a, trying to have a Drew's Clues little section. <laughs> you know, give away the shirts. Do to do do to do. <laughs> um, T shot member thing. Oh, uh, they're sending twice. Is it glitching? I don't know. Huh? Old Ben member. Thanks for the five twenty seventh birthday today. Happy birthday. Masters this week. Spring game Saturday. Guards opening day. Eclipse yesterday. What a week in Ohio. Hey, it's a hell of a week. Hell of a week. And the live show Friday. You fucking forgot about the most important thing. Yeah. Live show Friday. Yogi's. Yogi's on hard road. Doors open at 11. Show starts at noon, and then we're hanging out after. And Pat will sing you happy birthday. He will. Mm -hmm. On the show. Okay, I wasn't going to I wasn't gonna go that far. Brother. Keel, thanks for the two. Remember, Keel, happy birthday, Ben. It's mine, too. Hugh Hefner, too. R.I.P. Well, damn, we got some celebrity birthdays today. What? The legend. It's my birthday, too. <laughs> Fuck it is. <laughs> I know when your birthday is. Don't say it. I won't. Thank you. Kenny. Let's go, Kenny. YouTube member. Welcome to the gang. Appreciate you. Official member of the Menace Army with your custom emojis and your Avi that evolves. Chris keeps out. telling me he's going to make a keyboard. I don't know when that's happening. I literally don't have access. No access. He keeps telling me that, too. I don't know when that's going to happen. Well, <laughs> the cool thing about granting access is I can't grant myself access. I'm not the, <laughs> not the fucking president. Ah, <laughs> uh, bro, I sparred this weekend, bro. I'm, I'm hurting. Carson, thanks for the five. Let's go. Will Howard film tonight with the stiff white guy package. We're going to get it in. No. Okay. We're going to get it in. Stiff white guys. Stiff stiff white guys. Bunches of, bunch of them. Where is there going to be like a stiff white guy Hall of Fame? No, oh, there should be. It's like who you got in it. It's like. Tackett Curtis. <laughs> leads the way, brother. <laughs> Fucking leading the charge. He built that motherfucker. <laughs> Tackett Curtis. Brian Kelly. Um, trying to think of who else is stiff and white. Mm. There's a lot of them. Huh, I can't think of any right now. Huh. Well, Mike McDaniel. <laughs> He's black. I know. That's why I said it. <laughs> Look at you. Can't get nothing past you. Yeah, can't get nothing past Chris. <laughs> I'm like a goalie. Derek, thanks for the five. Gonna be there Friday. Live shows are lit. Got my gear too. Shit's comfortable and awesome. So comfortable. I'm telling you, it's... It, I'm ex I'm glad we waited this long to do to do merch because it's it's good shit. Like mm -hmm. I didn't want the cheap shit that fucking sucks. Like it's good shit. So go check it out. Menace to merch.com. Color Rush is coming before the Bourbon and Ball show. Um, for everyone that wears Menace gear to the thing, we'll take a big group photo like, outside, yeah. outside of Yogi's. So that'll be that'll be exciting. We'll do we'll have our shots too, our yellow shots. Mm -hmm. It's going. Um, Brian, gifting a membership. Thank you. You're a legend. <laughs> we appreciate it. And then Tyree becoming a a, a Remember, you're also a legend. My Appreciate guy. it, Tyree. Third base investigators. Thanks for the 20. Here in Texas, the liquor laws are backwards. We're supposed to be the state of freedom, yet the state purchases all the liquor for the state and distributes it. If that ain't some, ooh, commie, commie shit, then I don't know what is. It's, I, I can't stand, I can't stand government, the government, <laughs> period. So don't mm -hmm. get me on a rant on that frustrating but i did learn about bourbon uh this morning oh, what you got? i was reading a facebook post and someone put a really really intelligent like post as to why like i never i don't understand why pappy van winkle is so fucking hard to get and so expensive and then just like some of those rare bourbons that are allocated out and they, they made a point like that's what these liquor companies do they take their really high-end shit 
and they have very minimal amounts so that bars will buy them. to get those bottles to have them at your bar you have to buy all their really shitty with stuff and that's like that's how you get it so that's how they make so much money is like you have to buy their their cheap vodka and their fireball and all this other shit and if you buy all that they'll send you a bottle of i don't know weller 12 or cypb some shit that you nobody can can really get damn i was like damn that makes too much sense was but, like, if you want this kid on a visit you gotta yeah this kid this kid this kid also all need all like josh gad is like if you want to get this kid you got to make his mom come uh well he didn't so he went to texas sayonara and then broke the record and he said hook him hook him and then he ran fast as fuck at the combine yes he did all i had to do was you know envision beating gaddis up at the end of the 40 yard dash probably <laughs> outrageous but gaddis was done before he finished the race <laughs> who finished quicker who finished quicker xavier worthy in his 40 or josh cat never mind <laughs> that's fucked up mike thanks for the five i paid 167 for spring game seats but fuck it we in that bitch shout out to ron and mike can't wait to get the show back going that's gonna be crazy i'm so excited hell yeah <clears throat> d jack thanks for the five would love to see kojo he kind of reminded me of calvin ridley mm. we'll see I would like to see it. I would too. Speed, thanks for the two. As a wide receiver coach, how much input did you have and who plays? No, I mean you're you're in charge of all of it. Every every bit of it. I mean, like I've But they got vetoed sometimes. I mean, there's right? a couple times where a certain play, like the head coach might want a player for a certain play. I've told the story a million times about the time that I went to put Michael Thomas in for an isolation play against Virginia Tech, and Urban looked at me like I was an idiot, grabbed Mike, put him back on the sideline, and put Corey Smith in. Um, so every now and then, but it's a little different because Urban's a receiver coach, right? Like by trade. So he felt like he knew what he was fucking talking about. And you also talked about um, what that that play against Penn State went off Clark's face mask. Mm, that was another one. Yeah, you, you said you wanted to tear McLaurin in. Sure did. Mm -hmm. But that was also pass interference, though. Just so you it, know. it was. That, that I, I agree. Was. But it definitely hit bro in the face mask. I mean, just a bad, optically, really bad. Especially like from a JT Barrett throw. Like, I don't know how many of those you're going to get on the face mask. No. That was a great like, throw. Yeah, great throw. And I love James Clark. Shout out to James Clark. Shout out to James Clark. Shout out, shout out, James. Shout out, James. Mike, thanks for the two. Address me as member Mike respectfully. <laughs> member Mike, OG member Mike. Been around member for a Mike. while. But the member thing didn't pop up, bro. You know, I'm like, I like, you know, I'm all in the in, in the code of it. CD, uh, thanks for <laughs> the one dollar. Zach, before we get out of here, I do want to play this video from the lantern of James Arnitis talking about the linebacker spot and then have a quick discussion about that and then we'll send you out of here. Sounds good. I think CJ Hicks has done a phenomenal job. Um, you know, you got to keep you got to keep pressing him and making sure that he's really tapping into everything that he can offer. You know, I, I think CJ sees the opportunity um, and he's, you know, certainly making a case to to uh, get on the field this fall. You know, so I think it's been a, a really good spring for CJ. Um, there's just always, you know, whenever you have a good day, you got to follow it up by another good day, you know, and kind of stack days. And I think that's what a pro does. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's always, if you want to be a pro, you got to keep stacking them. That's the expectation. And I think, you know, he's had some really good days and then he's had some days where you're like, you're trying to push him a little bit. But I think, I think CJ, where he is now compared to where he was last fall is, uh, he's a lot better football player. Just seeing, you know, we haven't, we haven't done, um, like any live periods, you know what I mean? So we know he can tackle and all that, but I think it's just the, it's the repetitive grind of a football game from in the box, the constant. And he's been, he's been willing so far, you know what I mean, as far as his hand placement has been good. He's been willing to strike. He's tough. So it's just continuing to, to have him challenged to – there's plays right now where he's seeing it for the first time from a will backer. And so the next time he sees it, maybe a – throw, catch, tackle, is that's an interception. You know what I mean? Because he's seen it before from that perspective. Everything he's seen before this has been from top down, off the shelf, right? And so now it's dropping back, settling, driving. So he's made great progress, and um, I'm really happy with, with how Sonny's done. Great video from the Lantern, great interview, Zach. The question for you is what happens if C.J. Hicks ends up being a better Will linebacker than Sonny Styles? Well, they got to they – gotta, I mean, Sonny Styles has to be on the field. Has to play. He has to play. It's got to be – I, you got to figure some shit out. I know this. I love Cody Simon. I think he's a great option as that veteran kind of leader. But, like, we got to be so for real. We're not going to put him on the field over Sonny Styles, right? Right? Like, we're not that fucking crazy, are we? He's going to be on the field. This is all spring conversation. Whether it's at Will Linebacker, whether it's a three-man rotation, 
and Cody has elevated his game like that, mm -hmm. or you move him back to safety, and then Lathan needs to rotate in somewhere. Sonny Styles was one of the best four players on the defense last year. He's certainly one of the best four this year. He better not sit on the bench just because you moved positions. My biggest fear is I didn't. I, my biggest fear is coming true. It sounds like that there's going to be a struggle finding out how to use Sonny Styles in the most effective way possible. I know who wouldn't have that issue, Brent Menables, but this no. isn't a BB show. Zach, get us out of here. You got to skate. We appreciate you, Menace Army. Friday, live at Yogi's on Hard Road. Doors open at 11. Don't be late. It will be packed. We appreciate you.